What is the greatest real life plot twist in all of history? The 7th of July. 2007. The Pepsi 400 at Daytona International Speedway. With the date being the 7th of July 2007 everyone was betting on the 07 Jack Daniels Chevrolet of Clint Bowyer to win it. It was meant to be. In a surprise twist that left fans and journalists scratching their heads. Bowyer did not win the race that night. He came in 7th. The Trojan Horse. We grew up knowing the story but at the time. That was a hell of a ducking plan. The Return of Napoleon. Ducking nobody saw that one coming. On the 28th of June. 1940. Garillo Princip's group The Black Hand ducked up the first time when it came time to assassinate Archduke Franz Ferdinand in Sarajevo. His colleague was to throw a grenade under the carriage as the Archduke and his wife passed over. The grenade delayed and blew up as the next car came by. He panicked. Swallowed a cyanide pill. And jumped in a nearby river. Except the cyanide pill just made him vomit. And the river was 6 inches deep. So he was caught pretty easily. Garillo Princip was pretty damn dejected and went to get some food at a local restaurant at this time. After the assassination attempt. Archduke Franz Ferdinand told his driver to head to the hospital where he and his wife could visit those injured from the failed plot on his life. Cars hadn't been around for too long. So when the driver got lost and tried to reverse the car. It stalled, right in front of the restaurant where Princip was finishing lunch. He walked outside. Saw the Archduke standing there. And fired into his neck. The most revolutionary event of the 20th century was a do-over. Credit for this goes to you never loop 16 last time this question was asked. If you want to know more. Check out Dan Carlin's podcast Hardcore History Show 50, Blueprint for Armageddon I. The Treaty of Versailles. Ends the worst war known to man at the time. But sparks a second world war. Set up the modern day boundaries of the Middle East with no cultural considerations. And Woodrow Wilson denied Vietnam self-determination from France in order to get the treaty passed. Eventually sparking the Vietnam War. The treaty that was supposed to end all wars. Sparked many of the current problems today. A young Austrian man was rejected from art school. One thing lead to another and the United States dropped two nuclear weapons on Japan. The Redcoats are coming. The Redcoats are coming. Yeah. We were British colonies. The Redcoats were already there. Paul Revere was just warning Sam Adams to GTFO because the founding fathers were all smugglers thieves tax evaders. That story is the equivalent to. Run home EDA police come in. I'm from Ireland. And though relations have improved greatly with the UK. They are still seen as the historical budgie men of the Irish past. It may also explain why the Irish took to Catholicism so much. So as to distance themselves from the Puritan. Anglican villains our country imagined up. So as far as Ireland was concerned for centuries. UK bad. Vatican good. But recently. New documents have come to light. Revealing that the Vatican actually gave exclusive orders to the monarchy at the time. Which was still Catholic by this point. To invade Ireland. This is the historical and cultural equivalent of finding out Darth Vader is your father. Greenland is full of ice. While Iceland is green. On the 11th of November. 1918. Germans signed the armistice in a train car near Campion in the Clarity Retort. Admitting their defeat and ending the world war. Which at this point wasn't the first one yet. A monument was constructed shortly after. Where it was written. Here on the 11th of November, 1918, died the criminal pride of the German Empire defeated by the free people it wanted to subjugate. Less than 22 years later, on the 22nd of June, 1940, after Germans crushed the French in just six weeks, Hitler made them sign the armistice in the exact same train car at the exact same place, before blowing up the monument and bringing the train car to Berlin. This car was burned in 1945 when the Germans were declining. Even if it's Hitler. That's what I call a revenge with style. 
George Washington led the Continental Army during the American Revolution fought, in large part, over taxes imposed on the American colonies to pay for the cost of the Seven Years' French and Indian War. Plot twist, George Washington was responsible for sparking the Seven Years' French and Indian War when he attacked a French scout party in Pennsylvania. More ironic than anything, I find it amusing that Henry VIII was so desperate for a male heir and yet the only one of his children to have a long and effective reign was Elizabeth I, who had been declared a bastard and never had an heir herself. It's been said before. But how that one army invaded the other with 80 troops and came back with 81. We owe our existence to not one, but five mass extinctions. What are the odds of that? We're not supposed to be here. Assassination of Tsar Alexander II. Alexander was traveling through the streets of St. Petersburg in his carriage. Suddenly, an assassin threw a gum at the carriage. However, Alexander survived due to the fact that his carriage was bulletproof, a gift from the nephew of Napoleon. Alexander emerged from the wreckage to announce that he had survived. As he was saying this, a second assassin threw another gong. Shouting do not thank God to soon. Definitely that Japan was saved from a Mongol invasion by a freak. Once in a lifetime storm that destroyed the Mongol fleet. Twice. The meteor that took out the dinosaurs was the biggest single game changer. Without it. We would never exist. US. Helps the Ba'ath party overthrow Qasim in Iraq. Hussein ended up in charge. US. Overthrows Mossadegh in Iran and puts the Shah back in charge. This led to the Iranian Revolution in 1979. US. Trains and funds the Mujahideen to fight against Russia in Afghanistan. We really got ducked over on that one. Falklands War. Britain and trouble at home. Argentina invade the Falklands confident of victory and most of the world doesn't expect Britain to respond given it's the post-colonial era and the Falklands are so far away. Hell. Even the US refuses to publicly support Britain initially. But the British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher thinks duck it. I'm not having this and sends a large naval and infantry task force halfway across the world to fight the Argentinians. 12 weeks later the Argentinians surrender and the Falklands are returned to the British. That the guys who we thought were crazy saying the government was spying on us was right all along. At the start of the Cold War, Henry Murray developed a personality profiling test to crack Soviet spies with psychological warfare and select which as spies are ready to be sent out into the field. As part of Project MK Ultra, he began experimenting on Harvard sophomores. He set one student as the control. After he proved to be a completely predictable conformist. And named him lawful. Long story short. The latter half of the experiment involved having the student prepare an essay on his core beliefs as a person for a friendly debate. Instead. Murray had an aggressive interrogator come in and basically tear his beliefs to pieces. Mocking everything he stood for and systematically picking apart every line in the essay to see what it took to get him to react. But he didn't. It just broke him. Made him into a mess of a person and left him having to pull his whole life back together again. He graduated. But then turned in his degree only a couple years later. And moved to the woods where he lived for decades. In all that time. He kept writing his essay. And slowly. He became so sure of his beliefs. So convinced that they were right. That he thought that if the nation didn't read it. We would be irreparably lost as a society. So. He set out to make sure that everyone heard what he had to say. And sure enough. Lawful's industrial society and its future has become one of the most well known essays written in the last century. In fact. You've probably read some of it. Although. You probably know it better as the Unabomber Manifesto. The end of the Philippine Revolution against the Spanish. They had requested help from Americans against the Spanish only for the Americans to take over in colonizing the country. Crappy explanation. French monarchy puts itself into debt to help out American Revolution so Americans can gain freedom from France's rivals the British monarchy. 
This debt plays part in the economic crisis which sparks the French Revolution. TL. Dr. King Louis V helps one revolution only to spark the one which cost him his head. Jack Ruby shootingly Harvey Oswald on Live TV. The Americans develop a doomsday device and use it, twice. Hannibal crossing the Alps. General Tojo of Japan had a Rex painted on his body to show where his heart was. That way when he got captured he could heal himself. Plot twist. When he was captured he missed and lived. The dinosaurs die halfway through the second act. Putin invading Ukraine a few moments after the Olympics ended it probably one of the better ones in recent history. When Teddy Roosevelt was up for elections. Carnegie. Morgan. And Rockefeller did not want him in a powerful position because he was against big businesses. And so they ensured that he became vice president, a position of very little power, and that William McKinley stayed in place as president. They succeeded and thought they were safe. Except some guy who was pissed off at big businesses shot President McKinley and Roosevelt landed in the presidency. And consequently broke down the big businesses. Weimar Republic quells the beer hall putsch and imprisons the leader of the North Sea Party. Second in command is shot in leg and becomes a morphine addict. Leader writes god awful book while in prison and it looks like his moment in the sun has passed. He's viewed as a Rafe Nader style crank now. Only instead of ranting against the Ford Pinto 30 years after the fact. Jews are more his speed. His party is about as popular as the Green Party as well. Hovering around 2% in the general elections. 90 years later and the dude has inspired his own internet adage and he's well on his way to becoming the next Count Chocula. I'm pretty sure the only correct answer is the Spanish Inquisition. Christianity has a plot twist. It oddly survived beyond the generation of his followers notwithstanding that he promised to return before they all passed away. Joe Millionaire. No idea how this wasn't the most popular reality show ever. A bunch of money hungry gold diggers are told that they are competing to marry a multi-millionaire. Worth 40 million dollars. After the long. 13 week voting off competition. The brunette wins. This is when the guy tells her I am not a millionaire. I do not have 40 million dollars. I do not have 40 thousand dollar dollars. I'm just a construction worker. Napoleon Bonaparte is defeated after almost conquering Europe. He is banished to an island called Elba off of Italy. He takes a ship and heads for Europe. The new young emperor of France sends his entire military to France's southern coast to capture and hill Napoleon. Napoleon is faced by the army before him and says go ahead. Hill your king. They then once again accept him as their emperor and march on Paris. Deposing of the young emperor and attempting to conquer Europe again. Jesus gets executed by the most powerful empire in history to prevent uprising. Christianity becomes the state religion of the Roman Empire and the largest center of Christianity is still located on the bones of that fallen empire. The Fourth Crusade had plenty of twists. You start with Pope Innocent III wanting to prove that he's awesome by setting up a crusade. The army assembles in Venice. Is delayed and therefore owes lots of money to Venetian moneylenders. Venice tells the crusade to destroy and sack the Christian city of Zara. Pope finds out. Excommunicates the entire army. Army then decides to ransack Constantinople and restore Alexius IV to the throne. Pope realizes no one is taking him seriously. So unexcommunicates the army. Alexius IV can't pay the crusaders the money he promised them for restoring him to the throne tries to raise taxes to pay for the liberation of Constantinople. The people hate him for it so they heal him. So the crusaders invade and ransack Constantinople again. A crusade which spent the entire time going around attacking Christian cities making the Pope look like an idiot. I wish there were more movies about it. But given the huge historical inaccuracies in any film about the third crusade part of me is glad the fourth crusade is largely forgotten. Oliver Cromwell defeats King Charles I in the English Civil War which aimed to end the divine right of kings and rid England of the king's tyranny only for Cromwell to end up becoming the closest thing England has to a dictator. Dismissing parliament and generally being a big dick. 
when Cromwell dies they invite Charles I's son to return to England and become king and so Charles II takes the throne and becomes one of the best kings England ever had. The 1917 Russian Revolution made Russia the most democratic country Europe had ever seen. It was the first country to have universal suffrage. And was in the process of developing a parliament that would bring to the table every major political party and segment of Russian society. From communists to liberals to conservatives. While simultaneously trying to delicately extricate itself out of a unpopular war without losing any Russian land to Germany and Turkey, this is the reason why they just didn't end the war immediately after the revolution. A little over a year later a small communist political party with extreme and unpopular views. Even amongst their communist colleagues. With the help with a cadre of thugs hardened by military life unafraid to use violence. Use the very openness of that democratic government to overthrow it and turn Russia into the world's first totalitarian state. If it weren't for that small group of thugs thwarting careful democratic reform. Russia today would have been poised to be one of the stablest and probably wealthiest democracies of the 20th century. The first crusade started as a holy war to protect the city of Constantinople. The crusades went on and stuff but then in the fourth crusade a large group of crusaders ran out of supplies and sacked the nearest city, Constantinople. I'm probably very wrong about a lot of this as I'm remembering it from 7th grade history. The Cadaver Synod. Pope Stephen VII dug up and put Pope Formosus on trial for perjury among other things. He was found guilty. They cut his fingers off of his right hand and stripped him of everything. He was also already dead. I'd say Benedict Donald is up there. I was actually bored one day and read his entire Wikipedia page. People should have seen it coming. He was one of America's greatest generals and got zero recognition or respect. He finally snapped and said screw it. The British respect me and went to the dark side so to speak. Right. Way back in the when there was a guy governing way out in the boonies. For Persia. He's set up in a little place known as Greece. So far from the Persian eye it's basically not a thing. Wanting to get ahead in the game. He goes okay. What can I do? HRM. This guy next to me has rebelled. If I crush him and take the island back I'll probably get some imperial favor. However. He doesn't have enough dudes. So he goes to the emperor's brother and asks for a few. With a bit of a bribe on success. So about to launch the invasion. Aristagoras, our friendly hero, is chatting with his admiral. Gets a bit heated. Your grandma wears army boots and they both storm off. The admiral goes duck this guy and speeds off to tell the people they're attacking that they're about to be attacked. This lets the islanders defeat our friend. He's screwed now. Shamed himself. Owes cash and stuff to the brother of the emperor. Instead of his promotion he's probably gonna lose his job. And if he's super unlucky maybe even his head. What to do? What to do? Wait. Lots of Greeks here. Maybe. Maybe. So this guy organizes enough Greeks and rebels against Persia. One thing leads to another. And we have western civilization.